Hi guys, this is Max again. Uh, so in our last video, I was demonstrating how to deploy a Flask application to Heroku. Uh, I wanted to make a fault video to demonstrate some of the particulars about uh, running slightly more complex applications on Heroku. Uh, a great example of a really common design pattern that's a little bit more complex than what we did last exercise or last video with our very basic Flask application is to uh, run what's called an asynchronous task runner uh, or task queue. Uh, the, the prevalent tool which we'll use in this video is called Celery, so let's go ahead and install that dependency. Uh, we can take a look online at the docs about it. Um, uh, you can see in the background that while we're reading the docs, it'll be finishing up. Um, there's a lot of really great documentation about Celery. There's a lot of really basic, uh, although uh, complicated, tutorials on Celery. Uh, for our purposes, we're going to make a very, very, very basic Celery uh, async task. So the first things first is that we need to define um, a Celery app similar to what, how we defined our Flask app. So we can define it as app, literally. Um, ordinarily, you can load your settings. Uh, I believe it's from object. And we'll define a separate Python file called maybe celery settings.py. Um, I don't think the .py is necessary, but what we do here is we define our async tasks. So in our case, maybe we will print hello. Uh, really basic, but for example, um, there can be much more involved things that you don't want to be ran in the ordinary request response cycle of your web app. Uh, things that would slow down the uh, time in which uh, your users, your customers have to wait for a response from your web application. So great examples of those are sending emails, uh, saving multiple things to a database, uh, anything that can potentially lock up your web application and make your request longer or your response longer to a client. Uh, so in our case, we're not doing much. We're printing a hello statement, but for demo purposes, it's fine. Uh, we have Celery installed. Celery makes available to you this command line tool called Celery. So I was mistaken about the uh, way that we define uh, our settings for Celery. We need to call config underscore from object. Uh, we need to make that file celery settings.py. Uh, and the important settings that we want to define are what, how our tasks get serialized over uh, whatever message broker it is that we choose to use. In our case, we'll use Redis, uh, which for development purposes you should install. Brew install Redis if you're, you have Homebrew and you're on a Mac. Uh, there's many other great, I mean, there's a lot of documentation about Redis and getting it if you want to use it in development. But point being, you can run your Redis server. Uh, Redis provides you... Uh, you can either access it through a command line interface where you can uh, operate on different data types that it has available to you. For Celery's purposes, we'll deal with a list where we're pushing um, items onto the list. We'll have a, a list called hello. Uh, we can get the length of that list. And most importantly, we can pop items off of that list. And this is exactly how uh, a message broker works is that Celery, or our web app in our case, pushes items onto this Redis list, and we have the second process that's listening and waiting to pop items off of the list on the other side. So it's a first in, first out queue. Uh, there's a lot of other data stores you can do or you can use to support this type of flow, uh, but let's go ahead and run our Celery worker. See that this works. It's complaining about some other stuff. It's trying to use AMQP, which is uh, RabbitMQ. Uh, RabbitMQ is the default message broker. Uh, we can configure a different broker. Let's look real quick for Redis. We can see that's mentioned a lot here. Um, we can click through the using Redis. We need to find a broker URL. In our case, this will be this. Keep in mind, this is a uh, Python files so we can import OS. We're just defining uh, globals. In our case, though, and one of the awesome things about um, the way that um, the way that Heroku works is that what you can do through Heroku's platform is get add-ons for your applications. 
In our case, we want to attach a Redis instance to our uh, application. And by adding this add-on, let's just pick the first one, we'll pick the free tier. By adding this add-on, we'll get the free tier, we'll add it to Flask Deploy. I guess it's not free, but all the other services are free. I just chose one that actually costs money. Whoopsie daisies. Uh, let's go back to our Flask dashboard, or our Heroku dashboard, excuse me. We'll get our Flask Deploy. And you'll see that by adding that add-on, we have a configuration variable called Redis Green URL. So this, in, this environment variable will be available to you on your Heroku instances that you're running. In our case, we only have one Heroku instance, and that's the one running our Flask app behind a unicorn called Web. So we need to create a second one. Um, what I'm doing here is instead of using, instead of hard coding to use a local instance of Redis, we'll use the Redis associated at the URL of this environment variable. Uh, so when we run this in production, it shouldn't complain as much, is basically what's up. Uh, so we need the second process type, we'll call it a worker. We can call it really whatever we want, but the important thing is that it runs celery a or excuse me, celery worker a tasks.bat.app. We'll, we'll log very verbose, verbosely. So like I, sh I, don't, I don't believe I showed you this in the previous uh, video, but we can run foreman and it'll run e one instance of each of the rows in our proc file. So it'll run both our gunicorn server and our celery worker. So let's make sure that we have this defined correctly. It's complaining about a missing Redis library, so let's go ahead and install Redis. This is, there's a default or the most popular Redis client for Python. Um, don't forget, we'll have to add that to our requirements.txt before we deploy. Um, it's complaining about our uh, what we're serializing with. So let's add to our settings that we are only passing JSON. Let's give this another go. Should complain a lot less. Cool. This looks a lot more succinct, right? So I think we're about ready to go. We should definitely dump our, our Python dependencies now that we've added Celery. You can see that uh, git status. You can see that we have a file that we want to ignore. So this is uh, outputted by Redis, of course. And we have a new file, tasks.py, where we've defined our very simple print hello task. The one thing that we have not done is add to our Flask app uh, importing from from tasks import hello is that our name let's look let's call it the function hello so from tasks import hello and the important step here is to call hello dot delay and dot delay is a very interesting way of enqueuing our task to be ran so dot delay will enqueue the function call signature of our function task called hello. Um, so when I say NQ, it'll push an item onto the list on Redis and our other server process, uh, or really other server instance, which is listening, which doesn't appear here yet, called worker, which is running Celery, will DQ the item off the end of the list. So this worker is just really just waiting for tasks to be enqueued so it can execute whatever we give it. Um, in our case, it's very simplistic and not really doing much, but we can go ahead and give this a shot. So let's try form and start. You can see we've it started running our Flask application on port 5000. Oops, Daisy. Uh, I think we want to do localhost. Cool. So you can see in the background that hello has been printed to standard out. So let's give this a shot. Let's deploy to Heroku again, we'll add everything. We will commit everything. Second commit. Don't call your commits this, but for our sake. Cool. This will take a moment. Uh, you'll, you'll notice that the, the Python dependencies that we pushed previously do not have to be reinstalled, re-downloaded by Heroku a second time because they get cached, thankfully. Um, I don't know the specifics of it, but if you're worried about how long it takes to deploy on Heroku, uh, it's generally not an issue. Uh, let's go ahead and 
take a look at what our URL is for our instance. Um, I believe it's on your settings page. Yep. So we can access it right now. Right now it's the old version, which should just say OK. Um, the important thing now is that you'll notice if we go back to resources page, we now have a second worker type. So Dinos is Heroku's name for instances of uh, virtual machines. So think of every item here as a, as a different computer. And that computer's sole, pro sole problem that it's solving is running this command line application uh, in a demonized form. So we don't have any workers yet, so we need to edit this and add one worker. Let's save. You'll, you can see that it's quite expensive. Uh, fuck those guys. <laughs> um, but cool, now that that's spun up, let's tail our Heroku logs. So we might need to specify our application. You can see there's some grubbly gook from when Celery started up. And you can see that it printed hello. Um, let's try running again. Ah, cool. So you can see Heroku router. You can see what application was doing what. So we have a uh, worker type. Um, I guess I'm not seeing where our app lo is logging. I guess it's not logging anything because we're not printing anything uh, to standard out or to standard error. But you can see that the task is being received by our worker dyno. And we have asynchronous task processing. Uh, this can be used and generalized for tons of different stuff. Like I said, email campaigns, writing a lot of data to databases or data stores. And last but not least, scraping, uh, which is a demo I hope to do in the near future. Thanks for listening.